uh, looking for a place to focus. I'm this guy who's trying to turn something, a dream, into a reality. I grew up in Thibodeau, Louisiana. I grew up in a very small town, and I didn't have a whole lot of examples of what I could be. For me, I, I was always really creative, and I wasn't really sure what to do with it. When I was a kid, I didn't even know that interior design it was a career. I had no idea what it was. I knew that I had a love for fashion always. I always loved textiles. I always loved fashion. Um, I was obsessed with my industrial design class and building models and working drawings and so forth. My mother still has sketches from the fourth grade. I think things worked out for me the way they were supposed to and allowing me to realize that there's actually more out there. So from that point, I was always striving to find it. Right on. <laughs> I'm watching George and Wheezy and I'm like, they've moved on up. How do I get there? I moved to New York because I felt like it was a natural progression. I left Louisiana, spent three years in Atlanta, and New York was the next natural step. I needed to see what was really happening in the pulse of fashion. New York created something in me that, like a go get em, like figure it out, you know, a hustle. I, there's no better word for it. I feel like New York um, showed me, or gave me a window into exactly what I could be and the potential that I had. I feel like with all the competition, especially in my industry, the best thing that I can do is be the best Michelle. No one else can do that, you know? No one else can be me. Right. Yeah. So I want to paste it on you. Exactly. A little more comfort. These are serious Prince pants here. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I have tons of favorite songs. I mean, I have tons of favorite songs. I love music. Um, it, music has this way, it evokes this mood for me where I can remember exactly how I felt when I heard it. It's this vibe and it, and it was all inclusive. It wasn't black music, it wasn't white music, it wasn't gay or straight music, it was music. Everybody loved it. Everybody has the same feeling when they hear it. That's the thing about music. It's so universal and I, I want to be that as a designer. I want everybody to get it. I want everybody to be included. I love beautiful things, but I do still maintain perspective. A big part of my world is luxury, and, and that's exactly what I'm selling. I feel like designers are supposed to set trends. We're not supposed to follow them. If everything I offered you are things you saw in a magazine or that you could do yourself, what would be the point of, of calling me? Our clients are hiring us to be experts and to think about all the things that they don't have time for. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, my job does not end at five o'clock. A lot of introductions and networking for me happens at events. We also spend lots of time in our car, so we're very familiar with our navigation system. That's a little Navi in the background talking. She's like my inner voice. She's got in the kitchen. They're going to meet their inspector at the house that they're buying. Yeah. We were thinking that this whole wall could come out. Mm -hmm. The most important thing I do with a new client is explain that they're actually in control of the entire process. I think the notion is that, you know, this person comes on who's really fabulous and completely out of touch with reality to spend all of your money. I would feel the same way when someone comes in like the dang plumber. I'm like, okay, you need to tell me why I can't just ignore that side of the sink and keep going on with life as normal. The fact is that you're holding purse strings. Um, the things and the decisions that I'm making are based on you. That's cool. But I'm interpreting what you need based on your special set of problems or circumstances in your lifestyle. How to make your house 
rise up and greet you when you get home. Exactly what you need to have the best home life. That's my job. Atlanta traffic does not stop. You should always keep a costume change in the back seat for your next event, just in case you don't have time to go home. I'm like Batman in my car. No, Superman, this is my phone booth. I'd like to say that everything is aesthetic, but it's, it's really not. Um, I get vibes about things and it, it feels right and I'll know it and I know this is this client. Oh my God, this is Sylvia. No, nah, that's Kim. I feel like keeping up with my clients is my job. What I do is such an incredible luxury and I realize that and I'm really lucky to have the clients that I do. And it comes natural because I'm genuinely interested in what my clients need. I can't help but to care about it. I go to sleep thinking about, <laughs> about other people <laughs> in their homes. I wake up with solutions that I didn't have the night before I went to bed. It, it sounds almost cliche right now, but my goals are to really, truly build a brand that I'm passionate about. And, and, and I want to be really calculated about this. I see holes in the industry that I want to fill. I, I want to be the guy facilitating exactly what I feel like is missing. And um, I've gotten started on that. I'm really excited about it. It started with rugs because it was the best fit. It may logically um, roll into soft furnishings because uh, we started with rugs. So maybe it'll be uh, throws and bedding and so forth. I love bedrooms. Um, I, I think I do. I was going to say, I do my best work in bedrooms. <laughs> it's important to me to get as many textures in a room as possible. It's not only a signature of mine, it feels like a room that's lived in. It feels, it feels honest. It feels like how life works. It, it feels like luxury. It's usually the last step with most of my clients, and it's really kind of backwards. We should start there. We should start at the foundation. It's like building a house. That's exactly how I build a room. I sketched these rugs last year and picking out colors and patterns. Everything's inspired by fashion. Everything's inspired by textiles and men's tailoring and so forth. I've, I've seen the weavers. I was there choosing colors. I was there sketching and making four or five different samples before we chose one. When it comes to the rugs, I feel like, I feel like it's such a personification of the luxury that's in my head, that, that actually lives there. And, and, it's, and it's realized in, in a way that the hand of the rugs, when you touch it, it evokes a feeling for me to touch these rugs is like a little piece of heaven. I love it. I found that focusing on anybody else's journey is really a complete waste of time and a huge distraction from your own. I wanna be sure that I've done everything. I, I feel like after we die, we look back and uh, at our experiences and at our life in phases and in, and figure out if we were effective in doing the things that we set out to do and figuring out if we actually lived up to our potential and did we enjoy it. I feel so lucky that I've actually discovered a talent and that I'm actually able to make a living at my talent and that I can do things like this to communicate with people who share my interest and, and love what I love. And I think I'm kind of decent at what I love. You know, I, I realize what's important in my life and, and my experiences and, and the people around me. I'm able to celebrate my friends. I'm able to celebrate my colleagues all the time. Obviously, professionally, I want to make a great contribution, but I, I want to be remembered um, as a whole person. And stay tuned because there's so much more I want to share. There's so much more I want to do, and we can keep re-inspiring each other. I, I think that... Uh, that's how the design community works. We're, we're actually a real family. And now, not only am I an interior designer, I'm actually creating a need for it with my clients and generating business for myself. 
So maybe I can go back to my hometown and, and make some noise about the design world. 